What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Benchtown TV and our coverage of Jujitsu Kaisen. Secretly uh, round two. <laughs> yeah, secretly round two after we just banged out a quick 20 minutes of a chat. So we're going to act like <laughs> we've, uh, when I talk about things that I brought up in the manga, and Dave's going to be like, oh my God, wow. <laughs> yeah. Recreate so, those emotions for you guys. <laughs> obviously, we are talking about episodes three and four of season two, Hidden Inventory parts three and four. The dozens of you that have been following along with our coverage noticed we obviously didn't do an episode last week for episode three. Uh, some of us were in Mexico. Some of us are a little sick. It was perfect when we recorded the first time. I'll wind it up to both of those. Yeah, Dave started coughing right when I said that. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. So, uh, so yeah, we decided basically we'll combine these two episodes. It's a perfect kind of two episode act, I guess you could say, in terms of um, Toji finally kind of coming out not no longer being a what a one-eyed snake in the bushes so weeds. uh in the weeds i'm sorry <laughs> so uh before we get to all the fun stuff though classic binge town housekeeping we just released our 400th episode of binge town tv which i believe was covering the witcher season three episode six so if you're listening on our jujitsu kaisen specific feed i implore you to go to our binge town tv binge town specific feed um it just has every episode that we drop. So we're covering The Witcher. It has its own feed, but The Witcher episodes also drop on Bingetown TV. We covered Silo. It had its own feed. All those episodes also dropped on Bingetown TV. So you'll get everything that we're covering on that main feed. We're doing a ton of shows. It's been three years. I mean, we got One Piece coming up at the end of the month, or I'm sorry, at the end of August. We got Wheel of Time coming up in September. I mean, the good times will keep on rolling. So if you like us, stick with us. That's the best way to do so. All right. Jujutsu Kaisen, episodes three and four. We'll start off with episode three. We're not even going to get into these general thoughts of the episode. We're going to dive right in. Let's just, whatever we want to talk about that is Okinawa before the fight, we can just talk about all of that right now and get that out of the way. This is like when they're going through the flashes of yeah, just like exploring kind of, the city. Yeah, playing on the beach and things like that. It was like seeing Gojo's soft side a little bit here, the way he. <laughs> <laughs> the sea cucumber, I fucking love the sea cucumber part. It was literally when I reread the manga after we watched the episode, I was shocked of how like one for one that joke and everything was. I thought it yeah, was so funny. I have to say, since the first episode with the intro to the first to the, to the season, everything mm -hmm. else has been like pretty much identical, like yeah. pre pretty much word for word. I mean, they might have elongated that little montage like at the aquarium and the Okinawa like a little bit, but overall it's been cookie cutter. And which by the way, that was my favorite. I like the um the aquarium shot. I thought it was really well done. It's interesting in the manga because some of the lines are like really blocky and clearly like drawn like almost like sketch lines. Like they're like double, tripled, quadrupled mm -hmm. up. But the aquarium scene was like amazing line work, like so much detail, like clearly took he draws a lot of like time. that. I feel like when they're moving and fighting, he uses that sketch mm -hmm. um uh format or method. And then, you know, his backgrounds and stuff are really also he's also capable of just being very picturesque. And yeah. um I think they did a good job in the anime. That's all. Yeah. I, like I think it's contrast a lot. I think it's so funny that like we leave episode two with, you know, like we get this potential small plot of, oh, you know, like the, the, the woman got kidnapped, like maybe next episode we'll get into it. And it's just five minutes of him just <laughs> like, it's just the cutscene of him just like walking in, kicking ass, taking the girl and like everyone's <laughs> like all together. Like I was expecting at least some kind of fight, but not, not at all because it was just probably so easy for them to just walk in and take her back. Ah, they got um, a little vacation out of it. And so did, I know you didn't notice the first time, but Kento, Nanami, <laughs> we get yeah. our boy over time. Yellow hair, glasses, tie with the little mallet cleaver that's wrapped up in white uh, for anyone that maybe not who doesn't remember him from season one. Shout out to Super Mecha Frieza. Anybody out there that loves is in the uh, anime reaction community. You know who I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, was, that's good. No, I was going to say her husband, though. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She did a good cosplay of him, which is funny. Yeah. His, pow um, his power is just basically like he finds the center of mass. Yeah, it's, like, it's it's three. It's like seven thirds or three sevens. It's, oh, it's something center. weird. Yeah. yeah but I, like, I don't it's, remember exactly the distance. It can be of like 
any like it's almost of like any size though. He can do like mm-hmm. singularly just like one arm or a person's whole body. It's interesting. He's pretty cool. He's oh cool. no, I think all the powers in Jujutsu Kaisen are very unique. Like they're not powers that I've seen in other animes or mangas before, which yeah, is we're which is get great. A ton more. Yeah. 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 So, you don't have like your typical just like electricity or like yeah ice. fire. Like it's just yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, right. Kyle. No, you're good, brother. So. Now we're going to get meat and potatoes, baby. We get back to Jujutsu High. Exactly what Toji predicted happens. Gojo lets down the limitless barrier and immediately gets skewered by Toji, who was waiting in the wings. And then we're kind of off to the races at this point. I think we just chat about the fight itself up until we kind of get the conclusion of what happens in part one of the fight. Um, so don't really, we don't really want to get into the ghetto stuff yet. So we'll just talk everything Toji Gojo at this point. Yeah, I'll say it again, but I just think it like, you know, the threat immediately because ghetto and Gojo both are shocked here. Like we have not seen those kinds of expressions on their faces, even in present day, present day. And in these flashbacks, they've not, both of them have been nothing but arrogant on both sides and it was cool seeing here that like even like five minutes prior, like they're, they're both smiling. They're both so nonchalant about this whole mission. They're like, don't worry. Like we're the strongest, like nothing's bad is possibly going to happen. And then of course, as soon as the barrier goes down, Gojo gets skewered and you know, of course he's not dead. But one, it's Gojo. And two, we already have the future knowledge that he lives through this entire thing, but it's just still like, it's just, it's a sense of urgency for both of them. This is the threat level that they have to deal with right in this moment. One, he's capable of hurting Gojo and two, it was in a moment's notice. So threat level through the roof and Toji, what an intro for this guy. I mean, to just skewer Gojo like that, you already have my respect. Yeah, they were clearly kind of teasing like him. He's like, obviously we don't know anything about him really in episodes one and two, but they're kind of putting respect on him. He's putting a lot of respect on Gojo. And then just episode three, they just, they just cracked that clam wide open. It's like, holy shit, this guy is fucking for real. He is way for real. He is so badass. He's so strong. Uh, Just like everything about him. He's so imposing. His design is sweet. He's huge. He's super fast. And um, he gives Gojo a run for his money. I mean, he basically, I would count that as a win. Like, oh, he, yeah. beat, he beat Gojo. You know what I mean? He also allowed Gojo to unlock a new, whole new side of his power, which is sweet that you kind of see how that happens in this flashback. And it kind of takes, you know, Gojo even leaps and bounds higher than he was before yeah. and probably even more solidifies himself as the strongest. And what you see in episode, uh, the next episode but um it's just a overall great encounter um the fly heads the way he used those were all aw- was awesome to use something so simple to as like um uh, he used something so simple to and he made it so impactful yeah mm-hmm. in this fight yeah it was great yeah we noticed that he um so he uses multiple weapons he has that like worm like curse spirit that kind of wraps around him and stuff i fucking love that the idea of that is just so sick that he just carries a bunch of weapons inside of it Mm -hmm. um so he has that the second one that he uses that has like the little like fur on the hilt or whatever that dangles down when he like um so ghetto like puts him in that worm he just obviously cuts it right open and comes out like covered in the blood with his sword over his shoulder iconic shot i love that shot um but for anybody looking to get a hold of your very own version of that you get it for the uh, cool, easy price of 500 million yen in universe. <laughs> so if you want to just come up with 3.5 million US dollars, uh, Toji might give it to you. But um, the real shining star of his arsenal is the weapon that he uses after um, the aforementioned flyhead trap, I guess, quote unquote, um, is that the inverted spear of heaven, which is just an insane name for a weapon, it's the most broken fucking ability on a cursed weapon you could ever have. It literally just negates all cursed techniques. And it's still, even though I knew it was going to happen, it's so like viscerally, it's just like the fact, it goes through Gojo's throat and it's like, oh my fucking yeah. God. Yeah. And then just he just crazy. goes on to stab him repeatedly, like down his leg. That's when I yeah. said, you know, this is like a dark manga and I know it has some, comedic undertones and it's funny and and lighthearted but when it comes down to the nitty-gritty man 
it's bloody and that's what i like about it dude that weapon was so fucking cool i want like i want like a replica <laughs> one so badly i just it's think like it was so opener. bad at yeah, I don't, yeah, it's like a little. Yeah, it does look like a can opener a little bit. I just, it I looks think like it's a broken sword so, or like yeah, a bobby pin. Yeah, it's just so fucking cool. It's so unique, and you're, you guys <laughs> are absolutely right. Taken down by a he, bobby pin, dude. Yeah, he's literally just like <laughs> stat. It was like the fucking Alice in Borderland ending of just like fucking shanking yeah. her fucking knees over and over again. Oh and so, what did he get um stabbed in the head with? Like, just when- like a fucking steak knife. Yeah, he just pulled that out or he had it in his other hand or something. Yeah, okay. that's what it seemed like. I don't mind a little two-handed dagger action, a little Thorfinn. If Gojo anybody... admits that basically the only way to kill him is like you just have to cut his head off. Like, <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, dude, he just literally leaves him lying in a pool of his own blood. And it was just like, oh, my God, this guy is fucking insane. I mean, Gojo right before that uses the – we see the blue technique, which looked fantastic in the animation. He just mm. levels the whole area. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. It looks so good. At that point, if I was Gojo, I'd be laying there like dying and be like, well, at least I don't have to have the fucking principal on my back about I just cost the school fucking, yeah. you know, twenty five million dollars. <laughs> Whatever. I just blew up like four fucking buildings. <laughs> All right. So any final parts about that fight before we move on to just another, I mean, shocking moment of the episode? No. All right, cool, cool, mega cool. So we move now into the kind of star. Oh my god, I'm gonna forget the name. The star vessel, Plasma vessel group. tombs or whatever the tombs are, where um Tangan oh. is is. It's literally there's like a whole city underground, basically, is what it looks like. But we get Ghetto and Rico are having a conversation about kind of what's next for her, and like Alki had mentioned about the idea of you know she, she wants to enjoy time. Like, what is she gonna do? Uh, and then obviously Ghetto and Toji get into it a little bit. So we can talk about either of the things I'm sure we'll probably talk about. We want to talk about the Rico aspect first, but obviously then we want to talk about the fight itself. I just thought it was, um, I know what's going to happen. Obviously, I think everybody that's listening knows that by now, but uh, I'm really excited to see how it unfolds. Ghetto is so kind hearted, mm-hmm. You know, and like what happens? Yeah, I'm excited to just to see how it plays out in anime format. Yeah, I mean, that's been like a common theme or thing that we've been talking about these these episodes is that Ghetto has just portrayed himself like to be just such a nice person. Gojo's kind of shown signs of being a dick. And then eventually we'll get to the point where they kind of cross those paths where Ghetto, you know, becomes evil and Gojo stays the savior of the school, whatever. Um, And yeah, you're right. I mean, it's just he really is genuinely happy. Like Rico admits that she does not want to, she no longer wants to be the star plasma vessel. And Rico with a genuine smile on his face is like, let's, let's go home. And I, I don't know what I was thinking was going to happen because I I guess I completely forgot that Gojo just got worked that (laughs) Rico just gets fucking bullets right to the fucking dome. I was, I was shocked. I really did not expect that to happen. I, I don't know why I just I couldn't see it happen. And then I'm having flashes of uh, the kid from was it last season or season one? The fucking. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I'm oh, getting the- flashes of that. And I'm just like, holy shit. This show is so Alki said it's so fucking dark. It is really dark. And I'm sitting here still thinking like maybe there's a way she gets revived. But like there's just no that just doesn't do anything for the show. I think she's dead. And I, I don't know what they're and then that begs the questions of like what is now Tengen going to do with and he has to wait for a new star plasma vessel is he going to adapt to the point of being beyond a human within that time frame I don't know this I just really thought things were going to go smoothly I guess I really thought they were going to get her there and this was going to go off without a hitch and I was just I was shocked I really was they did it so well the timing of it is so like the way I mean it's literally one for one from the manga basically of like the isolation of her on the screen and then it's just like boom the bullet comes and honestly at this point I knew she was going to die obviously I like forgot about guns in the world yeah that... so like the gunshot I was like I, like it surprised me for a second I was like oh my god you're right because I don't know where he was using all the swords and stuff and I was like okay yeah it makes sense like he'll probably kill her 
I forget how it happens, but I'm sure he just like stabs her or something. Shot, and then he just shoots her. And I was like, oh my god, I forgot. It's like modern day. Like they do have guns. The guns <laughs> went off, and I was like, is that like what? Like I really was trying to like imagine the kind of weapon that was doing. It. And then he's just like holding just like a regular like pistol. <laughs> on him. Like, has okay. a pistol. It's like okay. Well, that's yeah. why I like this like manga so much. We talked about it when we mentioned he was in the gambling den, and it was yep. like the boat I mean, races. I mean, it's cool because. In every anime you watch, especially the ones we like, it's like pirates, ninjas, whatever. This one is takes place in Tokyo in 2020, whatever. And mm-hmm. and uh, there's guns, especially for somebody like him. He's the one to use one. He yeah. has no cursed powers. Yeah. You know, it's and it's, cool. I mean, it's it makes the death it's, it's... more brutal, honestly, and shows makes him more brutal. Yeah, it brings her death down like a measly, just like so measly. Like, just yeah, it's not as personal. Her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. and I mean it keeps him invisible. I mean the gun, obviously, like Maki, we know uses yeah, you're right like, all of the cursed energy for the guns, but like he does, it's literally just a gun. Like he just and he her. doesn't need to. Like he knew that she was she's nothing either. Like it's not like he yeah. needed to bring a special gun. You're absolutely right. Like that's you know, just yeah, so cool to think about. Yeah, Ghetto is just obviously like he can only sense the curse energy. He's not gonna like assume that he's walking down the hallway with a gun right gun, now yeah. so yeah he is so smart man I'm <laughs> yeah, he's a beast <laughs> to he's reiterate a it, killer man he knows exactly how they think to reiterate it again from the first recording that we did it's just <laughs> i'm so shocked that he's dead like i really expected him to be a character that we would meet in the present day like uh god it's been so long since i keep forgetting our main character's name because we it's been so long yuji yuji Right, Fuji or Yuji? Yeah. Yuji with a Y. Itadori Yuji, yeah. Itadori, yeah. yeah. It's I really expected him to to meet Toji at some point, but I just don't know. I I don't know. He's, yeah, it's uh, fucking. It's pretty crazy. So, I mean, and this was like the end of the third episode, which was wild. I mean, she gets popped, and then mm. Geto kind of like does like the die thing and whips out the curse spirits, and it ends. But thankfully, obviously, we're covering both episodes. Episode four is basically just opens up, obviously, with Ghetto versus Toji. Uh, I just love the opening sequence is like Toji fires the bullets and Ghetto like kind of like accordions, like some squids and they mm-hmm. just catch all the bullets. I thought that was sick. And then he just whips out that fucking white dragon and then they just get after it. The white dragon is so cool. I think it's I think Ghetto's Ghetto's power has definitely been growing on me. The way he uses it is just so interesting. Like you're right. Like it was like an accordion, how he just opened it up and all the bullets were caught. He's that was I mean, my he's favorite no, part of the fight. That he's no Gojo, was my but part. yeah. Yeah, it was sick. It was they did it like it looked kind of odd when he's like opening all the portals when they're really getting into it and he's just shooting basically all the squids at him and it looked like energy blasts. Mm. I don't think there was another way they could have did it. It just kind of looked funny that it looked like he was just like shooting like a ray gun at him, but it obviously yeah. was just squids. Yeah. <laughs> Little Gallimar. Yeah. Little Gallimar. <laughs> <laughs> the Gallimar gun. Little Gallic gun action. Um, so, but we do, we learn a lot about, maybe not a lot, but we learn a lot about, to- <laughs> I said it again. We learn about Toji in this fight. Uh, we just talked about how kind of his lack of curse energy makes him the invisible man. He can swallow that fucking curse spirit, which is funny. He's kind of coughs it up. It's that little like bald head <laughs> that he and just he actually eats. hides it in his stomach, which is yeah. crazy. His yeah, it's, his invisible outer shell is hidden by his internal invisible organs. It's, it's... Yeah, he's committed to the bit fully, a hundred percent. He noted Ghetto is like shocked, and he's like, "We left no residuals because we have learned, I believe, in you know, season one we talked about it. Uh, the show hasn't. I don't remember if they brought it up so far in season two, but the residuals of cursed energy. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, basically like y- you guys are still human beings. Like you have sense, you leave footprints. Like you know you." it changed the environment around you. Like it's easy enough to just track you like that. And his are heightened. Good. Yeah. And he also, yeah, he has heightened senses. So it's just like, he's just built for this work so perfectly. And it's just so great. Yeah. I mean, he's- usually these Uvo like characters from the Phantom troop are just like, you know, they're all just go at it with their muscles. Think later, but this guy clearly is just very conniving and definitely made a huge first impression on me. Like, I love this guy for sure. He's used his disadvantages to his advantage. Mm-hmm. And that's how he's trained his whole life to be able to stand toe to toe with the best. Lamillion. Yeah, literally. <laughs> kind oh, of. Wow. Shout out to him. That brings a tear to my eye to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, power of friendship, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we ain't got that yet here. <laughs> um, so there's two kind of interesting parts of this fight is gonna be the very quick, like 
simple domain that one of Ghetto's Cursed Spirits can use. I thought that was cool that Definitely. his Cursed Spirits can use domain expansions in that way like that. Is well, that we what that knew was? That. We already knew that's possible, though. Dave, is this, No, I mean, is that what that was when, like, the time froze for a second? For Yeah. And, like, the, oh, one rule, okay. the rule of it was, like, you can't do violence unless you answer her question. Okay. Yeah, he solved that so quickly because it's Dude, so they, quickly they, that I didn't even have a time. I, I thought it was just like they were moving so fast that like, no. Nah. Yeah. Okay. I that mean, makes he just so much more whips sad. out the inverted spear of heaven, the most broken item in the world, and just breaks the domain I, with it. I so. want it so bad. I want it <laughs> hanging above my bed this instant. It's so cool. It is yeah, cool. That was fucking oh, sick. That demon that. uh Itadori and Fushi Girl fight last season. That like when um when uh, Sukuna comes out, yeah. he had a domain, and that's why it was all distorted. Mm -hmm. So like curses can do that if they're yeah. strong enough. I guess it's just an interesting minor that like Ghetto can do it by extension through that. You knew right. that it's an interesting okay. concept to us. Like it I is. knew too. Like when he summons them too, like it, you could tell that these two are a little bit different than the ones that he's like just normally opens up like it was the dragon and the the woman that come out of it and they both were very unique looking and he had that serious face so you know they were going to be fucking strong yeah those are his boys that's like his pikachu and charizard right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a but great I mean, comparison toji it's... fucks up that dragon and gets us like oh my god yeah it's like and i like the aspect that it like he he mentions that it does actually have like you know dragon scales because you know i guess in my head when you think when i think of like these curses I just assume them to all be kind of, I guess, made of the same material in a sense, yep. you know, like, and I don't really think of a dragon, a cursed dragon having actual like dragon scales. So it was just a nice aspect that they added to build on the world. Yeah. So the, uh, the domain expansion gives a little bit of a, an opening and Ghetto tries to use his cursed manipulation to, uh, to take the little, I guess, fucking backpack <laughs> curse spirit that Toji uses uh, very interesting strategy. Toji was not ready for that at all. Um, it wasn't clear to me, at least, in the anime of why it doesn't work. But I, when I read the manga, it explained it. And I was like, okay, I'm just curious. I was wondering why. I think they he hit it with the, he he broke the technique with his sword. That's okay, broken. When I read the manga, no, it, it was, was saying that. It says that um, it was repelled because Toji has established a master-servant relationship with the spirit. I guess that's they kind of how that I took it. Print? That's just, yeah. I mean, it was like I like yours, Alki, that he was like so fast with the inverted spear tip that it canceled out the cursed power that he was trying to I use on it. That. But I, I took it when I first watched it is like what Kyle was saying, like kind of like I hate to keep bringing up Hunter X Hunter, but like you know you. A manipulator in Hunter x Hunter, like if you have a, like someone you're manipulating, another manipulator can't, you know, take that body from you because it's already under your control. And I figured because Toji already kind of had it under its his control that he couldn't just steal it. Like it wasn't it wasn't a free roaming Pokemon for him to just be like, oh, I got to catch it. <laughs> I got to catch it. This is like a trainer mod, yeah. you know? Okay, yeah, that's a fantastic comparison. I was, I was talking. I was like, you know, this is going down the Pokemon route. <laughs> yeah, like, let's just go good. there. That was a good journey there. Okay, so oh, I see what you saw, Kyle. It's like in the fine print at the end. Yeah, of the chapter. It, it might have been like a translator's note, simply on the like site version that we're reading. That could have been what it was. It's hard but, um, to find great translation sometimes. I had to go to like a few sites. I ended up choosing TCB scans as like a decent reference because if i want to get official translations you basically have to pay for it and i'm not gonna yeah, do that i mean you don't have a viz media account you can unlock all the chapters yeah if, just like by having that oh fuck that <laughs> <laughs> you're a fucking pirate bro you're a fucking pirate you can't, Pir you can't just admit that on the internet for free bro that's your <laughs> that's your pirate laugh it should have been Zay -ha -ha. Yeah. <laughs> So the fight ends. Uh, basically, Geto is just so shocked it doesn't work. Toji pieces him up with two quick kind of normal slashes. Not enough to kill him because, again, his fight Dude, IQ is off the charts. That's the divis signature move. from D <laughs> My signature move in D&D &D is the X slash. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> he basically gives him a Luffy scar yeah. um, and says, and the reasoning behind it is perfect, though, because he says, if you were a Shikigami user, I would have killed you. But since you're a curse manipulator, like, I don't know what's going to happen when you die. And I don't really want the trouble. And it's like, yeah, 
fuck, that makes a ton of sense. I yeah, mean, I want to take a second to appreciate Ghetto's power now while he's still like good. He's he's got a sick power and what he how he uses it, how he's so smart and he's able to interpolate it in different ways. He's just sick. And yeah. it's it's crazy because Toji Toji killed uh, Gojo. He didn't kill Ghetto. It's just it's a funny little yeah. uh, detail, you know, because Gojo has been understood as the strongest, even stronger than Ghetto, probably at this point, even now. And he didn't kill him. Get well, those powers. Had to. He kind of had to kill Gojo, and it wasn't worth it. It almost wasn't worth it to kill Ghetto. So that might be. I know. More of an insult. No, it makes sense. Like logistically, uh, log- logically, makes sense to kill uh, Gojo and not Ghetto. It just, I just yeah. thought it was a funny little detail. I think you're absolutely right. Like Ghetto's power. I mean, on paper, it seems like it's very, you know, regular, regular. But like when you think about it, in the world that they're in, it's very unique. And the way he does use it is very unique as well. And how he's so quick to think of like how to use each power is he's he's so smart. And I I do really appreciate him. And I can't. I, I'm I'm not excited to see him go to the dark side because I do love this little trio that we've got going on here. But yeah. Um, He's been now, twice ass. twice now that in just in this flashback, people have pointed out, oh, this is not Shin- Shikigamis. These are this is cursed manipulation. It's a big difference and it's being recognized. And I think uh, and again, encounters. this just proves how like just smart Toji is. I mean, Kyle, you said it like he's absolutely right. The way we've seen even on us, like we've seen Ghetto, how he has to turn him into those like orbs and then swallows them like legitimately if he does kill him like do those orbs that just pop out of his body like if he were to kill him so i i think toji he's so smart man i just have to appreciate him i'm <laughs> he's a beast. I, I i want him to come back but this is not he not places the absolute perfect cherry on top of this entire encounter when he basically tells i mean he says in this moment to ghetto like you know you should thank your parents essentially like your gen- your genes blessed you by becoming a curse manipulator instead of a shikigami user that's the, literally the only reason why you're still alive right now and then he kind of kind of he, I mean, he throws complete shade at them him and gojo where he's like you know you guys with all of your fucking amazing jujitsu like got taken down by a monkey like me who has absolutely no curse energy so like this don't is, forget that if you want to live a long life this i feel like has got to be this is going to resonate more with ghetto than I think what we see, like what we saw on screen, just because that sounded legitimately like ghetto from the present time talking, like the way he was like saying like the monk, like the monkey comment, like that's, I feel like he kind of says that about people in the present when he's, you know, meeting those rich guys, he's talking about them in such a belittling way. So, and especially, I mean, it's a traumatizing event. He just watched Rico eat two bullets in front of his face like he just got his ass kicked by this guy with no curse energy and to me this might be the smallest of stepping stones for ghetto to start making his way down this wrong path probably yeah but it just it did sound like it was legitimately like ghetto talking to himself you know like that like the way he was speaking just felt very villain like his villainous part no i like that he's definitely filling his head with that idea Hmm. great points dave Toji may be one of the stu- uh, the the worst fathers in all of anime. Oh my god, that, this is such a classic anime. <laughs> there's some anime fucking guy. terrible well, fathers yeah, in anime. Some, I mean, dude, dude, he, he, talking about Hunter Hunter, his, fucking. He, he was talking shit to this dude. He just beat and he used the word blessings, Megami, and he's like, oh yeah, that's what I named my son. It was my name, Bl- blessings, Megami. Yeah, Jing is still got to be worse. Jing yeah, he's still, probably the worst. At least, me, uh, at least Toji in his final moments, like kind of thought of yeah. Megami and was like, oh, I got to make sure this kid's all yeah. right. Jing would never. Jing. That's such a classic anime gag that I love that he's like very serious talking and then like, like you hear that like little sound and his face just drops and it's super cartoonish and the background kind of melts away. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's drawn so well in the manga too. Um, and it, Funny, just little interesting part is that this chapter in the manga, it I, it ends, the last panel is actually Gojo's hand twitching. So get like, yes, little, like thank you for mentioning that. I have like, that written down actually. Yeah, where it's like, oh, maybe. So it's obviously, like, he's, obviously, he's we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So before we get to the resurrection of one Satoru Gojo, we'll just quickly kind of cycle through the aftermath of this. Fushigura uses his cursed spirit to transport 
Rico's body. So that thing is just multi fucking purpose. I mean, it just does whatever, you know, it's very useful to him. Essentially. We learned a little bit about the star religious group. Uh, just an interesting thing that I wrote down is that it started in the Nara era is what he says, which when I looked it up online was 710 to 794 AD. So quite a long time ago, Tengen has been kind of introducing or he was preaching Buddhism and the moral foundation of jujutsu. It's just like a really cool little backstory of Tengen that, you know, well, obviously his character will get expanded on more at some point in the show. Um, I don't know how much it's really important to talk about the time vessel thing, whatever. It's just I like when um, the kind of agent handler guy says, like, you know, if Tengen goes crazy and kills all humans like you guys will die, too. And the guy's like, ah, well, then we'll die with our God or whatever. And then Fushiguro Toji does like yeah, the little like... like crazy thing. It literally, and I, when I read the manga, I was so shocked. It's dead. It's one for one out of the panel. He literally does that exact face and the exact thing with the finger. I was like, you know, bravo, hat off. Yeah, and then but he's a hypocrite too because he, then he just, he did their bidding. Yeah, very true. I mean, yeah, I guess he doesn't care if the world's going to end as long as he gets fucking paid. That's really all yeah. that matters to him. All right. Was this so, guy that guy that's with him? He looks familiar. Maybe I'm like confusing him with another. Like, have we seen him? That guy with the like the light mustache smoking in the room in JJK? Okay, maybe I'm not like beyond this arc, to my knowledge. I just wasn't sure if like that was a callback or if I was supposed to like recognize this guy that he like used to work with, you know, Toji Megumi's father. But I guess not. I don't believe so. Oh, uh, what right. is his role? What is he? Just a consultant type guy in the, just in the like a... sorcerer world. Just seem like a guy who knows guys and knows yeah. people, gets things done essentially. The owner of the Continental Hotel from, uh, yeah, uh, literally from John Wick. John Wick. <laughs> yeah, basically. All right, R- R- to that guy in real life. Um, so we get Toji victorious after he gets, I guess he's rejected from a dinner date that he was totally not going to pay the bill, which I thought was a funny little joke. That was but uh, basically runs into just an absolute drunk Gojo who is somehow still alive. Uh, just blabber and yapping and then you know the gloves come off again the fight's not over and we're right back at it in the pocket just trading blows well maybe not trading blows but throwing blows he yeah. mastered reverse curse technique which allowed him to unlock red finally mm-hmm. yeah it was just so fucking of course a character like toji is gonna push one of our main characters gojo to the just upper limits of just what he's capable of doing it was so cool just finally watching him master red because we saw him you know two episodes ago fail at doing it and this time he actually does it and i think of course i i think i'm sure he's going to keep training but i think that he's at the point where he's never going to fail using red anymore and then that I mean, I did so and then out. does he also just like create hollow purple like in this instant as well like was this something That's that so. he, well he, okay. he mentions it so they go i like that they honestly gave us this recap of them talking about his powers when Toji's like, all right, we're going to fucking fight again. And he's like trying to like go down the list and he's like, okay, he's got the power to stop, which is just like the neutral ability, the limitless. We saw that with the sword with the knives that get stopped in episode one. He has the power to attract, which is applied limitless. That's something he actually has to do with the, uh, the, uh, the technique. And then the power to repel is the reverse technique. So that's red. Yeah, I like that simpler breakdown of everything. And then when they get into the whole infinity aspect and like, yeah. just he can't be touched. Well, it's it's like, just way more simpler. Yeah, it's, it's different applications of infinity. But what I, they're going back and forth and they're fighting. And Gojo just has a great kind of in his head now talking about it. And this is where to answer your question, Dave, where he's like, you know, the positives of having such like a well-known technique that gets passed down through your family is that there's a how-to guide. But the negatives is that everyone in the fucking world knows about it. But like only few people within the clan know about this and it's the hollow purple Mm -hmm. which is taking the amplified and the reversal smashing them together to create a push you know to create mass and then push it away essentially is what he says like a giant black hole is how i took it he knew that that technique was possible he just could never get the reverse part of it down so he couldn't ever actually do it Mm -hmm. right but now that he got the reverse part of it down the real benefit almost of the curse technique is being able to do this hollow purple which yeah. is what he uses at fucking the end of episode, or I'm sorry, season one, when he just completely fucks up campus. And when, uh, yeah. yeah, when UG is fighting Fires the, it. um, yeah, Nanamine or whatever the, the plant, the guy? Oh, the plant yes. guy, yeah, the plant, yeah, yeah, when he fucked that was fucking sick when he used it for the first time. But Dude, yeah, this was just such a phenomenal fucking fight. And again, I'm just, I was shocked that Toji died here. I just really yeah. thought he was he gonna eats survive. Red. 
he eats the red one. He's like, all right, no broken bones. He gets a little stretch in and he fucking puts the inverted spear oh. of heaven on the fucking chain. And I was like, ah, oh, let's yeah. go. It was so high. It was so cool. It was yeah. such a great the, fight. Did you see the footnote about that? Uh, cursed you, the, the cursed tool, Kyle? Yeah, I don't in remember what chapter. it was, though. It, it can go on forever as long as the end of it, which is like this like little look like just like a pouch at the end of the chain as long as that's never exposed you can have unlimited chain oh my god that's insane that's crazy yeah. he was such a cool villain man i'm pissed that he's fucking gone yeah gojo's just going fucking ultra instinct just kind of orgasming in his own mind he has a classic line this is a, this is one people had an issue well not one people people had an issue with this part of the anime episode so he drops the line through heaven and earth i am the honored one it's like a very famous mm -hmm. line from um like ancient buddhist text and people just like the manga looked way better or whatever and it's like okay i get it but i thought I the know. line was fucking hard as shit i thought it was yeah great. i love <laughs> yeah. when gojo i just love when gojo's talking about himself as the strongest and the chosen yeah. one it's just like it's yeah, literally, like it's literally a line too. from yeah. like one of like the most seminal like buddhist texts when um he like reaches enlightenment and that's what he says I think it fits so well here. Fuck yeah. people. Oh, yeah. For sure. For <laughs> I mean, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. The fact that, yeah, like you were saying, he was just on the brink of death and he's like orgasming because he's just like, just he's reached the peak of who he can be and he's just loving it. Yeah. Um, but like, sorry, Rico. Like, I'm just killing it right now. So <laughs> I'm not even upset about you. Yeah. There were a couple great shots of uh, Toji this episode. The one you said with like the iconic of him slashing the, the worm and coming out of it. And then I just like really liked the one of, just like all the shots like it's him and then all the shots of the people that he just kicked the shit out of like gojo like this was a few scenes ago but it's like gojo laying on the ground ghetto laying on the ground um like just in him just reigning supreme over him i just fuck man i'm pissed yeah, i'm pissed beast. i could i need more i need more toji in my life and he pulls a fucking edward newgate on us and dies on his feet yeah yep. sick yep yeah, it was so badass, that was so dude. badass. I forgot about everything that. about him. Everything about him that could have been cool was cool. Like it was just dialed to a hundred. Even like, I he was sad. there. He's there in the pocket, and he's like feeling a little uneasy. But he's like, nah. Like I fucking gotta fucking fight the the six eyes with the limitless like reverse technique. Like I literally have to fight this. Like I have to do it. Yeah. And then he obviously gets fucked up, but he's something's like, Damn. off. Something's off. But yeah, his pride got to him, but he was like, I literally right here. Like I have to do this. Like he's how many reaching for the hole in his stomach. This? And I'm just like, fuck, he's so yeah. dead. <laughs> All I'll say Dave is he leaves a lasting impact. On I mean, I, I mean, and he leaves it. I mean, clearly for Gojo too. I mean, the fact Gojo, he he offers him. He's like, you don't have to, but I just want you to know I have a son who's going to get adopted by the Zanin clan. Do with what you want with that information. We obviously know Gojo is going to fucking go right there, adopt that kid and be like, yeah. yo, out of respect of this guy, let me raise this guy. Well, this now, gonna... too, I mean, Megumi, I feel like when we get back to the present time, everyone now will have look at him almost with different eyes as well. I feel like you have a different perspective on his character. Or they too. might already. Definitely. Well, ever the audience will. But people in the Juju, JJK world may already know. His oh, yeah, for sure. Guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just random idea. We should all we should get a group as many people as we can. And we should all go as Toji for Halloween. Just skin tight black <laughs> shirts with big white like balloon pants <laughs> and just Absolutely. like, you know, those little black karate slippers. Hell yeah. Absolutely. All right. The plan's in motion. All right. We're running out of a little time here, so we're going to call it. That is episodes three and four. I'm assuming we'll be back for just episode five individuals from here on individual, individual, individual uh, from here on out. Obviously, we are Binge Town TV. We really appreciate everyone that sticks around for these full episodes and listens to us blabber at the end. Just basically basic reiteration of what happened at the start. If you like us, follow us, subscribe at Binge Town TV. Binge Town TV main feed is where you're going to get the most Binge Town TV content possible. And yeah, the Discord, if you want to chat about JJK or other animes, mangas, or other TV shows, uh, join that and we can just chat like that off of you. don't need, need to even just listen to us. You can join the conversation. And hey, isn't that fun? And Goodbye, that's it. everybody. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Goodbye.